We are watching the hectic traffic in Rishikesh as we are preparing our minds and getting ready to hit the road and um, go to Hemkum Sahib from here. Uh, the roads are busy in Rishikesh. It's a crazy vibey energy and uh, the city doesn't seem to stop. The first road signs um, as we leave Rishikesh with uh, Hemkum Sahib 200 kilometers to go. As you will see in this video, um, I'm featuring a lot of the sea nature energy, um, the beautiful mountains, uh, the rivers that come together and forms the Ganges, and uh, Uttarakhand is definitely a place to visit. Um, most of the sacred Hindu sites are based in Uttarakhand and also Hemkum Sahib obviously for us six. The Ganges actually are formed by four rivers and all these rivers, um, the sources of these rivers are in Uttarakhand. Really made this trip exciting. Uh, we've used different forms of uh, vehicles to travel with. Uh, we've been in a normal passenger car or we've been in a government bus, we've been in an AC bus and now we're in a scooty. So we're going to see how many forms of transport we can use um, during this trip. What is absolutely breathtaking is that people are actually walking this extremely long yatra of five, six hundred kilometers uh, to their destination and back. We go higher and higher up next to the Ganges and it just keeps on flowing and flowing and flowing. Fresh cucumber snacks. We've stopped at a water point up on the mountain overlooking the Ganges as we travel from Rishikesh to Hemkulsa. It just happens to cross my mind that I wonder how many people have actually done these yatras. How many people has walked before me? How many people have stood here overlooking these beautiful cliffs and waterways? How blessed am I to be able to do all this? Well, there is my wave. We are ready to hit the road again. Traveling on a scooty is definitely not for the faint-hearted. Um, it's 100 kilometers we're going to put into this lap today. And um, it's extremely tiring as we continue to drive at a very, very low speed. I mean, India's speed le levels um, are much, much uh, slower than the rest of the world. And uh, the roads are at places really, really risky and bumpy and not in a good condition and of course we want to stop and we want to look at um, the shops and, the, and uh, look at the little villages and have something to eat next to the road and some chai and yeah the scenery is absolutely breathtaking <laughs> 
On this corner in this building, they're busy setting up a longer hall, so we'll see that when we come back. As we are traveling, we're noticing that the clouds are forming. While we are definitely um, ascending and going higher and higher, so it's evident that the temperature is also starting to drop a bit. Right side is a beautiful Shiva Hindu Mandir. As we're following all these little windy roads, here and there is a small village. This is a particularly beautiful little village on the cliffs right next to the river. And uh, as you can see, there are many tempo travelers, which we call tempo travelers in um, India, is these big combi-like vehicles, as everybody is on summer holidays. And there are many, many tourists stopping overlooking uh, the mountain ranges and the beautiful lunges. In the olden days, yatras were walked. So it is important that you stretch your body, mind and soul if you do go on to a yatra. And I think this is exactly what we're doing, although we're using vehicles to travel with, but we're definitely stretching everything. Here Dalbiri is showing me um, the cliffs on the side of the road and the rock fall risk. As you can see everywhere next to the road, um, these rock falls so as soon as the monsoon starts and the rainy season starts the rocks falling so it's really a very very dangerous road to drive um, in peak traffic and at night it should definitely be avoided at night but people just keep on going and they drive and they're determined to reach the destinations of the yatras Yet another village on our right hand side um, on the mountain slopes next to the river. Pink, blue, purple, green houses, very cute. One thing that you notice whilst traveling through India is the color use. People just love color here. Yeah, they say Punjab is the brightest in color, but definitely all over. Even Uttarakhand has surprised us now with these beautiful, bright colored buildings and houses next to the river. I must admit, Indian sunsets are just to die for. And uh, also the riverbeds have got white sand, like beaches. Valley of Srinagar. And the Ganges. We're following the Ganges to find the source of the Ganges all the way up there. just stopped as we saw the most beautiful Hindu Mandir set in the middle of the river on an island with a bridge uh, leading to it. One thing that there's definitely not a scarcity is um, water in India. Indian sunsets are definitely as gentle and kind as the people that walk this land. is limited as the sun is busy setting so we need to keep on moving. There is always more and uh, hopefully on our next trip we are able to do much more just stopping and popping in at various mandirs and temples. The sun is setting and we pressure to find accommodation for the night. 
Um, we're halfway to Emkum Saheb. Tomorrow we'll do the next leg, so um, we're going to have to find a place to sleep over. We are pushing forward, but now the roads are really becoming dangerous. This is when you get to your room when it's late at night and you just don't have energy to look for uh, further rooms. So yeah, this is it. Extremely hard bed. Two chairs. Two toilets for some reason. Shower. And the basin. That's quite basic. That's it. For 1,000 rupees. Thank goodness there's hot water and I'm getting ready for my bucket bath. Bucket baths are normal in India. Normally the showers only work for cold water. Having a hot shower and getting into that hard bed, totally needed until tomorrow's trip. We are heading to Gobind Ghat tomorrow. Why Guruji Ka Khalsa? Why Guruji Ki Fateh?